If you say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins unto God, Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful God, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices of desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought to have not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who repentance. According to thy promise, we declare to mankind. In Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may after live in godly righteousness and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and thou now, now shalt show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show forth God glad in his bosom. For the Lord is a great God, and the great King of all gods. In his hands are the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills are his also. And the sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and be before the Lord our Maker. For he is our Lord God and he is the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hands. O worship the Lord in beauty goodness. Let the whole earth stand in all of him, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world, and the people of his truth. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, there shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. And I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life shall I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading is from Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the force of the, all the fruit of the ground, 
which you harvest from the land that the Lord God has given you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord God will choose as a dwelling place for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at the time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land and the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Armenian was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, he cried out to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You sh shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord God has given you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. O Lord, Lord and ruler, ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their rights of suffering, you have made the heavens and the earth with all their past array. All you have things great with fear, and fear in your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your mercy God is beyond all measure. It surpasses all the minds of the heaven. O Lord, you are full of compassion long-suffering and abounds in mercy. You hold back your hand. You did not punish you to deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sins and be saved. And now, O Lord, I then to need my heart and a feel your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned. I have known wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not punish my sin, nor command me to the depth of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of the most sufficient. And in me you will sow forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praise and your glory from age to age. Amen. Amen. A reading from Luke. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days. And when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all their authority. For... It has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, I will, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil delivered, 
When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an appointed time. Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. 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 God. Blessed be the Lord, the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. He has raised up a mighty salvation for us. In the house of his servant David, he has spake by the mouth of the holy prophets, which has been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercies promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swears our forefather Abraham, that he gave for us, that we who the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou hast spoken before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins through the tender mercies of our God, whereby the day spring of the high life is to us, to give light to them to sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet in the ways of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God our Father Almighty. For hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show forth thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. salvation. Endue thy ministries with righteousness. And, and make thy choice be joyful. joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And, and guide us, us in the way, way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy and thy name name among all nations. nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hopes of the poor taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations and as you know the wickedness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and opportunities of our lives, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Have you ever noticed the most striking feature in today's gospel story? The one we always read on this first Sunday in Lent? We always hear one of three versions of Jesus' encounter with Satan after 40 days of fasting in the desert. And in all three of the versions, Luke being no exception, two have a remarkable conversation. What's most remarkable about it is that they're actually doing the same thing. Jesus and Satan are both trying to make their points by quoting scripture. This is unsettling. It upends a much more comfortable notion of evil to which we might be tempted. A view of evil as something easily identifiable that bears no resemblance to the good. If that's what evil is, it's relatively easy to avoid and combat. That isn't the way it usually works, is it? Let's start with a clear understanding of who and what this pesky devil is. The verbal wrestling match between him and Jesus is not a competition between equals. As much as he might like it to be otherwise, Satan has no creative power whatsoever. Satan is a creature of God like any other, not an equal and opposite force to God. So Satan has to use the material creations of God, creations that are at the deepest level fundamentally good. He has no other tools at his disposal. Hence we find Satan quoting scripture. Scripture is good at its core, but Satan looks at it and thinks, you know, if I can just take some of these words out of context and twist their meaning just enough, I can produce a truly diabolical result. And it's not just Scripture. What is evil, really, but a twisting and perversion often just a slight twisting and perversion of the good. We see this in some of history's most horrific moments. The fascist nightmares of last century weren't born of a hunger for destruction. That would have been easy to spot and head off at the pass. Rather, they had at their roots a vision and desire for a utopian society, something that, if rightly oriented, can lead people to do wonderful things. But obviously, those desires were not rightly oriented. All it takes for things to go horribly awry is to take energetic movement toward the good and turn it just one degree off course. And Satan is simply the personification of this phenomenon. He quotes scripture. He takes what is fundamentally good and turns it off course just enough to get a very different result than what was intended from the beginning. And this is the great challenge of the spiritual life. Things cannot be cleanly divided into categories of good and evil, because evil is really just a misdirection of the good. And this is why this season of Lent calls us to a practice of lengthy and detailed self-examination. We're encouraged to go deep within and have a good, hard look at what we find there. Where might the good within us have gone just slightly off course? Where might our will and our desires misalign by just a bit with God's will and God's desires? This is hard work, and it's never done. 
since context and circumstances change with the passage of time, our work of self-examination and discernment needs to be ongoing. Now, this sermon probably sounds like a call to some pretty hard work, and it is. But there's also a piece of very good news here. The fact that Satan quotes scripture and tell, tells us something very important. Every single one of us, from ourselves all the way to the devil himself, is eligible for redemption. There is no one who has strayed so far as to be irredeemable. All things, alive or otherwise, are good. And even what appears to be pure evil is simply a misdirection of that good, something that still has the potential to get back on course. Now this makes a huge difference in how we treat one another. How would we engage with one another if we were clear that even some of the most egregious behavior is a good desire misdirected? Perhaps you have heard the phrase cancel culture in recent times. The idea is that if an individual says or does even one thing that doesn't align with the social and political sensibilities of his or her community of friends and followers, that person gets canceled. They are shunned and denied any platform they used to have and the assumption is that their one misstep means that they are no longer worthy of any sort of friendship or trust. Now, this might not seem like a theological phenomenon, but I would suggest that it actually is. It is rooted in the belief that a single ill-chosen word or action is indicative of a fundamentally flawed and irredeemable character. It is precisely the opposite of what we hear in today's message, in which Satan quotes scripture. Today's message encourages us to be very, very hesitant to cancel. Even if someone presents to us words or behaviors that directly oppose views we hold very dear, we're encouraged to ask a key question that cancel culture never asks. Could what we're seeing and hearing here somehow be rooted in the same good desires that we feel? Could this seemingly bad behavior simply be a misdirection of the good? If so, canceling is definitely not the answer. Engagement and redirection is. Now, I know what I'm saying here is a hard thing in our current context, but wrestling with the hard things is what this season of Lent is all about. Between a pandemic and news of conflict near and far, most of us are in a state of far greater fear and higher alert than usual. That makes the temptation to assume the worst of others, to cancel and to shun, higher than ever. But that also means that the need to do otherwise is higher than ever. Perhaps our collective Lenten discipline can simply be to stay thoroughly engaged with one another, even when that proves very difficult. The Bible tells us that Satan quotes scripture, and Jesus gives him a fair hearing. Given that astounding reality, I think we should be able to find it in our hearts to make some space for one another, don't you?
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world, saying, Lord, have mercy on us. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, have mercy mercy upon us. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all the bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark, our bishop that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy truly true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we lift up to you this day the Anglican Church of Korea. In our Episcopal Diocese, we pray for St. Gregory of Nyssa Church in San Francisco. In our local community, we pray for Marantha Church in Livermore. Lord, have mercy upon us. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. In our weekly cycle of prayer, we lift up to you these members of our congregation. We pray for Andrew, Aaron, and Sue, as well as those in military service, Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, Taylor, and Drake. Lord, have mercy upon us. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all in assemblies or judicial roles at every level of government, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, have mercy upon us. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in the whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, have mercy upon us. And we most humbly beseech thee, Lord, of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Allison, Olivia, Becky, Brett, Kathy, Dave, Aaron, Esteban, Helga, Janice and Bravo, Ben and Catherine, Ken, Kip, Nina, Michael, Robert, Sally, Yvonne, and Terry. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. You may now add your own petitions, aloud or in silence.
Lord, have mercy upon us. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life in thy faith and fear, especially Dick, Doris, and Bob. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so that so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, have mercy upon us. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love in the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So close us, clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. Through the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Father of all, all mercies, we be worthy servants to give you humble thanks and thanks for all the goodness and loving kindness to us and to all of us. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, for above all our immeasurable love in the redemption of the world of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray. Give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only in our lips, but in, but in our lives, by giving, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, in honor and glory, world end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.